Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Good morning, good morning. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is the College Football Week 9 Recap Show. Chris, you look like you're in a different location, buddy. Yeah, uh, the uh, motherboard on my laptop just totally crapped out. So I'm <laughs> using the family computer this morning. I've sent everybody away. Well, that uh, that sounds good to me. It, it looks good. It sounds good. Well, Everything's rocking and rolling. <laughs> this, is, this is a much older computer, so I was worried that it would even work. That's a hey, well, it's working fine. Everything seems okay. Uh, the show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Go check that stuff out. They got some awesome stuff going on. Six wonderful sports books. We approve of all of them. Go check them out. Tunicatravel.com. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can get us on Facebook. On Twitter at Winning Cures. You can find me at Gary WCE. You can find me at Chris B. Giannini. And you can always subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you comment, you know, leave some messages, tell us what you like, what you don't like, etc. And you can subscribe to the podcast. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts if you would. We're also on Spotify, Google, uh, whatever your favorite podcast app is. Go check that stuff out. Yesterday was the third straight week that we have had. A massive upset. So let's go ahead and and start off with that because we're we're going to get into this thing. We're just going to start running immediately. Kansas State whips Oklahoma and then holds on for dear life for a forty one or forty eight to forty one win in Manhattan, Kansas. Look, Kansas State held on to the football for over thirty eight minutes of this game, and it's it's what you have said forever. The best defense is to not play defense. You keep Oklahoma off the field, and you have a better chance of winning the game. Like, period. Uh, Oklahoma could not stop the run. Uh, Kansas State had 213 yards rushing on 45 carries. They also went 18 for 28 for 213 yards passing. Uh, Oklahoma actually outgained Kansas State. Had 497 yards to 426. The problem is, 395 of it was through the air. They went 19 of 27 in that spot, and they just they went quick, right? Uh, super efficient game from Kansas State. Had zero turnovers. Oklahoma had two. The All the talk is about the onside kick. And going back and looking at it, it, it looked like it hit a Kansas State player. It looked like the Oklahoma player got blocked into the ball. It, I mean, there was just all sorts of stuff. It's, uh, did it go 10 yards? Did it not? It, all, it, all of that. At the end of the day, the fact that Oklahoma was having to attempt an onside kick to get back in this game is the reason why they lost. That's right. Like, am, am I crazy for thinking that they did not get screwed? It They just didn't have a good game. No. Listen, at one point in time, <clears throat> we're, we're all texting on big group texts with a bunch of guys. And and we're texting about a bunch of different things going on at that time period. And next thing you know, I look down and I'm like, holy crap, 21-41 Kansas State is whipping their butt. Yeah. Like, how did this happen? How did how did I not notice this through all the flipping of channels and going back and forth on all these different games? And man, yeah, I don't feel bad for Oklahoma for if there was a touch and go. Maybe it could have been this. Maybe it could have been that. Did they get it right situation to get them the onside kick? That No. If if you're the, the 20-something point underdog and you fought like hell to get to that point, I feel a little bit worse for you. But when you're the favorite, you don't, you don't get that benefit of the doubt. Nobody feels sorry for you. You're supposed to go in there. You're supposed to be one of the top four or five teams in the country fighting for a playoff spot. And you just lost it, bro. Yeah. I mean, it's it was – it was- and, and that's not one of the places where, uh, like, everywhere else in the country, it felt like it had a ton of rain, all that kind of mess. Like, it was beautiful. Like, it yeah. was it was wonderful. And Ohio State, I mean, o- o- Oklahoma, excuse me, uh, has they've got the guys to be able to run the football. And yeah. they just didn't. You know, they, they were not super efficient. The two turnovers killed them. And they were getting whipped on the line of scrimmage. 
I mean, yes. just absolutely whipped. And, you know, it, it got out to a 48-23 to 23 lead for Kansas State. And then they kind of just folded up shop, it looked like. And you cannot do that, regardless of how much time is left. They were up 25 with, what, I think eight minutes left in the game? Nine minutes left? Yeah, yeah, I found it shocking that they were able to run the ball so easily on them the entire game. And then at the end, when they've got the lead and they just got to kill clock, they're not running the ball anymore, or they're not able to run the ball anymore. I mean, is that a credit to Oklahoma's defense finally just standing up? Or is it one of those things where you know they're running the ball? We don't. We literally can put all eleven guys down in the box, or, or play man to man across the board. Put 11, you know everybody else in the box and say, you know, you're not going to run it. I I would say, it, it, excuse me. I would say that it would it had something to do with the fact that they knew that they were going to run it, but it, the fact that Kansas State was so effective throwing the football. I, I mean, Skylar Thompson was 18 of 28 for 213 yards. He, he didn't have any touchdowns, but, you know, he did have four rushing touchdowns. <laughs> like, they just didn't know how to defend this team. And credit to Chris Kleiman and, and that bunch. At one, we were dead wrong on Kansas State in the offseason. Like, we... Yeah, no, no, no question about it. Yeah. I, I didn't think they had talent. That's the problem. It's crazy. They've had this talent because you don't walk in in one recruiting class with a bunch of freshmen and maybe a couple of transfers at JUCOs and do this, yeah. have the season that they're having. These these are guys that have been there. Oh, and, yeah. And God love Bill Schneider, but damn. Yeah. This team it, is really good. It's it's remarkable. <clears throat> I mean, at Bill Snyder, like, built a good foundation. Absolutely built a good He's foundation. He's to know what to do with it. Yeah, that's what's crazy is why did it take this coaching staff to come in and actually get them to play to their potential? Like, I, we always thought Bill Snyder was the guy that, that covers these spreads, right? That's right. And, and could get the most out of guys. And instead, that that was not the case in this situation. No, uh, but, I, I mean, I think Clown was doing a, a hell of a job. I, way, I, way underestimated who they were going to be this year. Oh, Cause, yeah. Just because I thought he's going to need to recruit some talent. That's what I, mean, I, I don't know that they have speed, and I don't know that they have strength. And I was wrong on both those. Yeah, they, they got some the dudes. team in the country, but they've got enough speed. And dude, they're strong. They're, they, they're crazy strong. They got dudes in the trenches. I yeah, mean, it, it is. I mean, they, and they look like they're building. This is what's cool to see in the Big Twelve. You're you're getting a separation between teams of some of these guys are, are looking like we're being built to beat Big Twelve teams, and some of them are continuing to build normal Big Twelve teams. And when those teams clash, we get really good football games, yeah, even if there's there. a separation of talent. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I agree. I agree 100%. Um, so, they've got dudes in the trenches. they got all this stuff. It's always funny to me to see the overreaction of, okay, well, there go the Big 12's playoff chances. Well, hold on. You already crapped on the uh, the Pac-12's playoff chances. Like, we all understand it is really difficult to go undefeated in college football. You're not going to have four or five undefeated teams at the end of the season. Right now, in, in the top five. They still five, have an undefeated team. Exa- yeah, they've still and got they Baylor. Get the two big boys at home, and and Baylor <clears throat> gets to play Oklahoma and Texas at home. They like, they they've already they've already beaten Iowa State and Oklahoma State <clears throat> and Texas Tech, which I don't know that Texas Tech is one of the big boys anymore. But th- that middle tier that we always have Baylor in, they've beaten their equivalents already. Yeah, they they have to get by the two big boys now. And I think they probably still have Kansas State on the schedule. I don't, no, no, I don't no. They know. they already beat Kansas State. But they've already beat Kansas State too. So I, I don't I don't know Baylor's entire schedule. I know this: if they get by, holy crap! Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, that's that's that monster outside trying to get in my house. <laughs> Might have to let him in if he's doing that. It's a, for um, anybody that doesn't know, Maui is is his puppy. That yeah. uh, what what is Maui? Is Maui a pit bull? Yeah, he is yeah. a puppy. Is a is a relative term. Yeah, he's, he's 70 young. pounds of solid muscle. He could whip my ass any day of the week. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Love it. He's sweet, though. Anyway, um, no. He, um, yeah, so so to say that, well, there goes their chances. If Baylor goes undefeated, they're going to have a – now, that's a big if oh, in yeah. a huge, tall order. Well, but if it, they go undefeated, that's an amazing resume. But if Oklahoma wins out, that is – like, that's going to be fine. 
Like they're going to have a pretty good resume. I think they're going to need. I do think they're going to need help, though. Yeah. No, I, th- I think they'll need a little bit of help. But at this point, Oregon still needs a little bit of help. Utah needs help. Florida, yeah. Georgia, every, you know, all of these the, teams. The, the, the loser of Alabama LSU, I think, is going to need help. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the way it goes. If Ohio State wins out, if Clemson wins out, they are in. Yeah. If Alabama wins out, if LSU wins out, they are in. Like, Move on to the next topic, and, uh, and and you can talk for a second. All right. <laughs> let's, let's move on to that. Let's see. Uh, next topic up, let's talk about Ohio State. They don't have the big wins that LSU does, but they dominated Wisconsin. Uh, just, I mean, utterly, utterly dominated. Uh, there was a lot of rain in Columbus. And if you go look at the stats, when it was raining, it was a much more even ball game. <laughs> it was it was not crazy, but when it stopped raining, and and before it started again, Ohio State wiped the floor with Wisconsin. I mean, it, it, it the score thirty eight to seven. Of course, if you haven't seen, I'm sure if you're listening to this, you knew what the score was. But J.K. Dobbins twenty carries for one hundred sixty three yards. Teague had thirteen carries for seventy six yards. I, I mean. 50 carries for 264 yards rushing and three touchdowns just dominated Wisconsin. And I did not see this coming at all. Wisconsin, I thought that Wisconsin would be able to run the football because, one, early on in the ballgame, they looked like they were getting getting out there, right? They were able to push around Ohio State a little bit, but they end the day with 34 rushing carries for for 83 yards. Like, they, they had 108 passing yards, uh, Jack Cohn was not great, you know. It, it Jonathan Taylor, like any any Heisman hope that he had, oh, died no. in Columbus, at which he didn't have no. a, a great one anyway. But Jonathan Taylor, twenty carries, fifty two yards, that ain't gonna cut it. And Wisconsin had nothing to fall back on uh, once they got down. I mean, it was just it, it was it was a bad day all around. I thought that they would show up in this game. I, I have learned my lesson. No more betting against Ohio State ever. This team is ridiculous. Ryan Day, the things that he is, like, this team is so efficient. And and one thing I noticed yesterday, and people have been talking about this all year long, and I had not really seen it, they do not miss tackles. They never miss tackles. It's, it is absurd to me that they always can bring down guys, even if it's just one guy in the open field. Like, did you notice that in this game? No, yeah, I mean, I'm, and, and I'm kind of noticed it all year, but uh, it's just, yeah, they, they they look like they're the cream of the crop, and um, I, I'm going to tell you, so does Penn State come to the big house, or do they go up to Happy Valley? Oh, Penn State has to come to the big house. Uh, not so, to the big house, to, uh, to the horseshoe. Horseshoe, whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's, we, we cannot confuse those going forward. <laughs> I don't care. That's Ohio State Michigan fans will have a, like, just come apart. That's I good. Said. Good for him. Good for him. Good for him. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. No, they, they they look like a freight train, and and so. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. All right. Let's uh, let's move into the next one. Michigan. Just ridiculous last night. Uh, it's pouring rain, which of course hurts the one advantage that Notre Dame really does have. Uh, other than that, this this game looked on paper to be pretty even. The biggest advantage was Notre Dame's passing attack, and Michigan didn't really have one. And Michigan wins this game 45-14. to It wasn't really even that close. And with, with the pouring rainstorm, which was really entertaining to watch, uh, Shea Patterson, 6 out of 12 for 100 yards and two touchdowns. Dylan McCaffrey, 2 out of 2 for 34 yards and a touchdown. Uh... Michigan ran the football 57 times for 303 yards in this game and three more touchdowns. Uh, Notre Dame ran the ball 31 times for 47 yards. Uh, uh, that's a bit of a difference. I don't know if you, you're good at math. Yeah. But, but yeah. That's, that's like 300 yards separation. They, yeah, Michigan outran them by When you by outrun somebody by almost 300 yards, yeah. you're going to beat them. There's there's no question about that. Yeah. Ian Book, 8 out of 25 for 73 yards with a touchdown. Uh, the new kid, Jerkovic, uh, 3 out of 4, 
60 yards, one touchdown. That was in garbage time, whatever. But Notre Dame, this is the last time that they will play until 2033. And the petty tweet by Michigan, I need that just like tapped into my vein, man, because I love petty football, especially with with rivalries like this. You know, this isn't like a a massive, massive rivalry. It's not Michigan-Ohio State. It's not Alabama-Auburn. It's not uh, LSU-Alabama, right? But it is. there's still some hatred there. And to see that kind of It's about as big of a rivalry as you're going to get between two teams that aren't in the same conference competing for the same conference championship, though. Yeah. Because all of those other rivalries not only matter because those teams hate each other, but part of the hatred is those games matter because it determines a conference champion every year. Right, right. So this, the, this doesn't determine anything other than we just don't like each other. Exactly. The uh, the tweet reads, Dear at, and this is from the Michigan Athletics account, Twitter account. Dear at ND Football, we need to take a break. We've been doing this for a while now, and we need our space. We're glad we could end on good terms. Thank you for not being defensive. <laughs> Subtle jab, right? Uh, let's keep in touch, and maybe we'll try again in 14 years if you're still independent. And then they do like the little wave emoticon that uh i i can't get enough of that kind of stuff like in michigan being able to talk trash now after being utterly dominated by wisconsin being uh you know being beaten but it dominated early by penn state like now they get to come home they play well in the big house some you 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 gave a lot out about the rain listen i don't know that this game was played in rain and dry weather cold weather hot weather I think Michigan is getting better. And we always talk about this all the time. College football does a really bad job of rewarding teams for improving throughout the season. It's the one thing that I hate most about college football, and I wish that there was a way to find find a way to change that. But but if we think a team has great pedigree and, and they start off slow and they turn into something far better, at the end of the year, we have to find some way to improve them other than saying, you get to go to the Peach Bowl. That's awesome. And 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 I because I think this Michigan team is is head and shoulders better than the Michigan team that started the season with the first three games of the year. And yeah. if you don't believe that, you're just a Michigan hater and you're out to hate on them for no reason. Like Yeah, no, this, because, this team because they're completely better. different. Yeah. No, you're you're a hundred percent right. Uh I, I don't you know, I, if we have four minutes more, or maybe one minute more in the Penn State game, they win that game. Everything is going their way. They found a way to stop Penn State for three quarters of football. Penn State scored the first quarter 21 points. After that, they got one touchdown the rest of the game. This defense is really, really good, and they have found their identity, and they are shutting everybody down. And these are good offenses. Well, and, these are and not just on top slow, of that, big guys. The, the defense. Uh, not, not the de- Sorry, the offense. Oh, the and yeah, offense. they're finding an offensive identity. Yes. No, yeah. that's, they are, that's definite. Shea Patterson is playing way better. The running uh, – this running game has not done anything. And Haskins was the guy last night. Like, all season it's been Charbonnet. And Haskins came up with 20 carries for 149 yards last night. Now, one of those was a 49-yarder, but you still had 19 carries for 100 yards. Like, yes. That was pretty intense. Like, they have not had a good running attack all season. Well, we know this is a new offensive coordinator. I'm the one I'm the one Michigan defender that's not a Michigan fan, okay? I, I get that. I'm, 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 I'm the only person on the planet that's like, I, mean, I don't hate them. I don't love them. Hey, you know, they, they're, they're a really good football team. Listen, you – Totally revamp and change your offensive philosophy. Go ask Arkansas how the hell hard that is when you go from a super passing team to a super running team, now trying to get back to a super passing team. Go go see how many seasons that takes. And it's taken them about four or five games, okay? And they lost two of those five games. And they they have they've kind of gotten an identity and, and some type of passing or offensive, not passing, but an offensive identity. And they're yeah. looking much better. I That's, know we can't just throw away those two losses. I'm not asking anybody to. I'm not asking anybody to. I'm just. I'm just saying. Let let's let's not just look at them and say, oh, well, this is a garbage team. Oh yeah, and they're definitely not that. They're definitely. And both not. of those losses, by the way, 
on the road at two extremely difficult places to play. Yeah, Camp Randall and Happy Valley. Uh, they yeah. get the white out of Happy Valley and they go to Camp Randall. That's that's insane, dude. Yeah, it's I mean it's it's tough stuff, but they they do still have now Michigan State doesn't look great. We'll uh, we'll get to that at some point. Oh, they got one game left on their schedule that they got to win, and yep. and that and they're probably not going to. Okay, Ohio State coming to the big house. I'll get that one right this time. And and uh, you know it, it, it's going to be tough. Tough is probably an understatement, but yeah, yeah. Just keep getting better. If they get better every week between now and then, Ohio State can't get better. There, there's nothing they can do to improve. They look like they're playing flawless football. I do wonder if Ohio State has maybe hit their peak a little bit. Like, it, but but hang on, if they hit their peak and they can maintain that peak because they have just superior athletes and anybody they play, yeah. then that's fine. But here's the thing. If you want to beat Ohio State, you have to be able to play great defense, elite-level defense, and you have to run the football. If Michigan can build an identity to do that, they have a puncher's chance. I'm not saying they can win the game. I'm not saying they're going to win the game. I'm just telling you, they're, they're going to have a shot at least. It, it should be a ball game. Yeah. No, you're you're right about that. Um, let's let's talk about Penn State and uh, Michigan State right quick while we're on this topic. While we're on the Big Ten, look. If you look at the box score on this game, because I, I had this one on along with LSU Auburn. Oh, why well, watch one second of this football? Game. Well, that's that's the deal, right? It, Penn State wins, and it, it seemingly convincingly, right, yeah. twenty eight to seven. But you look at the stats. Total yards, Penn State had 302, Michigan State 265. Passing yards, 189 to 182 in favor of Penn State. Rushing yards, 113 to 83 in favor of Penn State. There was, the the biggest difference here was Michigan State turnovers. Michigan State had four of them. Penn State had one. And I, I want to think that Penn State is an elite team. And that, and that defense might be. Yeah. But... The offense, they've got, like, explosive tendencies. And then they are not efficient, and I cannot figure them out. Look, I, I don't there, – there's a part of me that doesn't like teams that live and die by just explosive plays. Yeah, the first time Michigan State – or Penn State, sorry, has, like, an, an, an 80-yard drive, 75-yard drive with, with 9, 12 plays – um, you know, to score a touchdown will we'll be the, the next time they do that will be the first time they do that. They, they definitely live and die off of big plays, big plays, big plays. But the reason they can take the chances with the big plays is because their, their defense, they trust. Oh, if yeah. we go three and out and give them the ball, I'm not afraid of that. It doesn't scare me at all. Now that makes and, and I think, I think there's some level of, the way they call the game and the way they call the plays they call it are because they, they trust their defense so much. Yeah, they, they don't necessarily need their offense to be super efficient. Like they, no, and I don't think they're looking for efficiency. I think they're looking to score. I think they're looking yeah, go they for big points. plays. Go for the jugular when you can. Yeah, if, if we put up, you know, 21 <clears throat> points or 20, if we put up 28 points, we're not losing the game. Yeah, they should not lose those games. I'm trying. I, I agree with that. I, I think the Penn State is a really good team. I cannot wait for late November at, with with them going over to the horseshoe. That that's gonna be just a fantastic ball game. All right, let's move to the SEC. Let's talk about LSU and Auburn. Now, you watched all of this. Yes. Tell me tell me your thoughts before I start getting into stats. Um I believe Auburn is absolutely still a top ten team. I believe that I picked them to go 10-2 and two at the beginning of the season. If you ask me to completely get out of that pick or double down on it right now, and those are my only two options, I would absolutely double down on it. They get Alabama and Georgia at home. I think they're a better football team than Georgia, flat out, plain and simple. But I think they're a better football team than Georgia. And, and Alabama, they're not a better football team, but Jordan Hare – is going to be insane for that football game. Oh yeah, and and I I would I would take my chances with doubling down before I got out of that. Um, their offense, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot like a lot like uh, uh, Michigan's, getting so much better as the year goes on. That is not LSU's defense is bad. That is they're finding an offensive identity, 
and Gus Malzahn is back in his home of calling plays. That defensive front is nasty. Auburn's upset right now because a lot of holding calls didn't get called. Listen, I've been on this every year. I, I crap on Alabama when it happens to them. It's happening to LSU now, too. You're, he, he, they're exactly right. They're exactly right. I yeah. watched this game. I was like, oh, crap, holding. Oh, crap, holding. And they didn't call it. Yeah. It, it, some, and some of them were big holding calls that were big plays. I don't know that it changes the outcome of games, but as the underdog in a hard-fought game against a team that's a juggernaut right now, it's very frustrating, and, and, and you just don't want to lose that way. Um, but but Auburn, let's speak to Auburn first. I, I think they're still a really good team. I think Bo Nix is finding himself. That receiving core is getting better. They got a lot of speed, but they're just raw talent. And they beginning of the season, it looked like they kind of didn't understand the offense. They didn't understand route trees. These guys are all kind of learning on the fly, I think. Um, and they're getting better. Um, so I, I really like them. And then they can still run the football when they want to. Yeah. LSU, man. <clears throat> this is the first time they really got hit in the mouth. I thought it was going to happen in Florida. Florida's defense didn't stand up. And, and, well, Florida's and, and, defense was also missing their two best pass rushers and, and probably their three best defensive players, right? I don't know that there's a single defense in the SEC that's that's 100% healthy, though. I mean, LSU's been missing guys all year. Bama's missing oh, yeah. guys all the time. But, I mean, but what I'm saying is that when you Auburn's have... Missing, Auburn's missing one of their big front four, too. Yeah. I mean, if they have that guy, is it different? Because that front line... That's the first line all year that pushed LSU's offensive line around. It's probably going to be the last line to do it because there's no other defensive front as good as them. But those guys are big and they're nasty. LSU's offense held up, stayed strong. You know, there was a part of me that kept thinking when we got in the goal line situation, uh, you know, go for the end zone, don't take the field goals. Thank God Ed Orgeron is not me. Um, if they don't get those – and they don't get to still goes as points on the board when they did, might lose that game. Um, I always think that I believe in this offense for the first time in my life, and so I just think one more play, we can get in the end zone. One more play, we can make it happen. Um, but uh, the defense played great, though. The, the defense did exactly what they do. Early on in the game, they gave up drives. That they're figuring this thing out. You give Aranda a half to watch what you're doing, and he goes in the locker room. Oh, yeah. That second half, you're not doing what you did the first half. If you don't come out with a different offense, I'm going to tell you this, if Alabama doesn't come out in the second half with a different offensive mindset and a completely different script for the second half of football, they're not scoring in the second half the way they score in the first. Now, they're going to score a lot in the first. That's going to happen. They're not going to do it in the second half. They don't change almost everything because he is so good at watching what you're doing yeah, his adjustments saying, are ridiculous. I can figure that out. Yeah, his his adjustments uh, are absolutely ridiculous. Now we got to get healthy now because we've had DBs and defensive linemen hurt all year long. Yeah. <clears throat> and last night, two best defensive players on the defensive back both went down. At yeah, the Stingley. End of that game. Stingley, uh, uh, Stingley got, killed it, and then Dak. It. I think he just got a. I think he got a stinger. Like he he was fine afterwards. And Delpit. You know, walked a little gingerly on that ankle, but Delpit was fine afterwards. He, so my fear was Stingley. Two weeks, you know, my fear with Stingley was: is this a collarbone or a shoulder? Because of the way he ran it, uh, landed, landed, and the yeah, guy landed yeah. on him. No, nah, it, it it appears that he's fine. Uh, there's there's been no extra news, but other people saw them walking around Baton Rouge. It's saw them right. walking around after the game. They're they're fine. So unless something happens in practice, uh, nothing happened in that game. To keep them out of the Alabama game, and yeah. and you got two weeks to heal up, so should be That's fine right. after that. Um, as far as stats go, LSU, even as as well as we feel like Auburn's defense played, still had 508 yards of total offense. I, I was just about to say they didn't get the points on the board that they usually get because they settled for field goals and not touchdowns. When also but- had two turnovers. I mean, that's oh yeah, no, that's yeah, that that's that, 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 killed, that one turnover in the red zone. Oh my god, yeah. That frustrated me so bad, but um, well, but I think the, missed, the missed extra point just like because I thought, okay, I've got LSU minus ten and a half, and you did too, and I'm <sighs> thinking that missed extra point is going to cost me the cover, period. Yeah. Like this, this looks like it would be an eleven point game, and honestly, it was it was a ten point game until late, late in the fourth quarter, and Auburn made that drive 
and scored with it. I don't even know how much time was left. But um, here, I can actually tell you. They scored with two minutes and 32 seconds left. So, you know, at, at one point, the missed extra point cost the cover, but then the late drive did as well. So, uh, you know, you look at the numbers, you look at the play-by-play, you look at the the box score and everything. Bo Nix, 15 out of 35, passing 157 yards, one touchdown, one pick. DJ Williams for Auburn, 13 carries for 130 yards. Just Now, now he had a long of 70. So, sure. 12 carries for, you know, 60 yards, still pretty good. Uh, so he he was it was good to see him, but they were they were throwing in everybody trying to trying to get rushing yards, and they were able to produce, but not to the level that LSU was. I mean, it, Joe Burrow had 13 carries himself for 31 yards and a touchdown, um, and I, I don't know how to say the guy's name. Edwards, how do you say it? Hilaire, Edwards Hilaire. Oh, the LSU running back. Yeah, yeah. Like Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I think that's how yeah. you say it. Because uh, I was watching with the sound turned off. 26 carries, 136 yards, one touchdown. And he was able to run, you know, between the tackles some. So LSU's offensive line was able to to move a little bit. And you can do that when the threat of the pass is so great, right? Like, that's it, it helps out a ton. When you can pass to open up the run or run to open up the pass, it helps out everything. And the other team has to uh, respect that. And Auburn had to respect it. It opened up everything for him. Burrow, as as bad as you know the game itself looked, still thirty two out of forty two for three hundred twenty one yards, one touchdown, and then the one pick in the red zone. Like yep. he was really, really good. No, I, like at halftime, I felt like man, he's just not he's not able to get anything. And then I looked at the stats, I was like, oh, he still got two hundred yards and a touchdown. Oh yeah, that's a that's a pretty good half. Yeah. I mean, there's some guys that aren't going to have that for the game. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the touchdown, obviously the touchdown average went way down because they were getting three to four a game um, from him, and and he got one passing. But at the end of the day, when you're in a game like that, you don't care about stats. Nobody's trying to win a high school. You're trying to win the football game. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're in the fight of your life to to try to stay undefeated, and that's all you care about. Now, you're right about that. Um, Let's move on from there. Let's go ahead and jump into the next topic. Every Big 12 underdog won yesterday. And I always love these, you know, when when you have a day like this because it just throws everything into chaos. Let's jump into first TCU 37, Texas 27. You look at the you look at the box score and Texas had slightly better numbers. The one glaring problem, Texas had four turnovers. And and all four were interceptions. That ain't good. No. So it, they they did have 447 yards of total offense. Uh, TCU had 435 yards of total offense, which should never happen. Like it, it, that tells you how bad Texas defense really is. Yes. Yes. I mean, we were, I was making fun of Oklahoma's defense in our text chat. Texas defense might be the worst in the country. That's like a Power Five football team that's got NFL talent. Yeah, it's somebody a, 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 from this defense is going to go play on Sundays, and I don't know that they should. Well, it, I'm I'm wondering. I'll tell you this: I know Todd Orlando is going to be fired at the end of the season. Like I I don't think that you think you think a hundred percent. I don't even think it. Like I know this. Uh, I know that Tom Herman does not want to fire him because he like he's been with him for a while. He's been with him ever since Houston, and. Mm-hmm. The guy has always <clears throat> been able to come up with big stops and whatnot when he needs to, but there's he can't figure this season out. And, I mean, this is not a good thing. Not a good thing. They've already got three losses, so that's not good. I wouldn't expect them to remain in the top 25 uh, this week. But they, they stayed in after the last loss, so we'll see what happens here. But, man, that so, was... Just on a personal uh, note, I got a, a sizable ticket for... Them minus, uh, sorry, not them minus anything. Them to go under eight and a half wins. Right now, if they went out, they get nine. They uh, yeah, you need one me. more loss. They got Kansas State at home, at Iowa State, at Baylor, and then Texas Tech at home. And I don't think Texas Tech is beating them. 
But but the other three might. I got to get one W. One W out of one of those three dogs, those three teams. You uh, I, th- I think you'll be able to handle that. I think you'll be able to handle that. Hey, hey, one more W. One more W. Let's uh, let's talk about the next one up in this slate. Uh, a team that you just mentioned, Iowa State, loses at home, thirty-four to twenty-seven to Oklahoma State. Um, I I'm just like I I kind of wrote off Oklahoma State a little bit. That's so foolish. That's and so I, foolish. And I I shouldn't have right, but they, like if you watched Oklahoma State play multiple times. Uh, at home last week, I mean, they just got trounced by Baylor. And I understand Baylor's a good football team. I got that. But the way that, I don't want to say that they quit, but, man, at the end of that ball game, like, Baylor was able to hit big play after big play. It was just. Defense for Baylor just takes your will to fight away. They wear you down. They smother you. They suffocate you. And they make it to where you just don't want to play football anymore by the fourth quarter, which is how they can take over the game even if they're not winning the game. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Iowa State is a Big 12 team. Baylor plays when, – when Oklahoma State plays another Big 12 team, they got a puncher's chance every time. Yeah. Every time. Because they can score with anybody. And if you don't if you don't hit Oklahoma State in the mouth, they're never out of that game. Ever. Yeah. You got a value. And Chuba Hubbard is a damn man. Yeah. He – 22 carries yesterday, 116 yards, one touchdown – uh, on the season, he has actually got, let's see, da, 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 da. on the season, 216 carries, 1,381 yards, 16 touchdowns. That is insane. He is the best running back in football. And in, in eight games, he's already got nearly 1,400 rushing yards. Uh, he, he, could be, he could be looking at 2,000. He could be. Yeah. But we'll, I mean, we'll see. They, they still got some tough games to go. But uh, they Spencer make Sanders, game, you know, I think he's going to get it. Oh, yeah. It's the postseason to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, ab- absolutely. I'm just talking about 2000 in the regular season. Uh, yeah. Spencer Sanders looked pretty good. 16 out of 24, 249 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. Brock Purdy had to throw the ball a lot in this game. And mixed results. Uh, 39 out of 62, 382 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. Uh, if you were keeping track at home, that is one turnover for Oklahoma State and three for Iowa State. And that will bite you every single time. Let's move on to the next Big 12 upset. And I know that you love this one. I know you're going to be smiling about this one. The Jayhawks are looking legit. Kansas gets their third win of the season. A 37-24 to win over Texas Tech. They score 17 points in the fourth quarter. And look, ever since they switched out offensive coordinators, Hello. they Hello. look legit. I, I, let me let me tell you a stat right quick. Kansas under Les Miles had 415 yards passing. Would you have loved to see this at LSU? I know, I know. I know. <laughs> Just fire your best friend, and we never we never have this. Just never have this. Like we never have a problem if you just get rid oh. of your best buddy. Like that's oh. all we have to do. This is why you. This is why you don't hire your friends. Tom Herman hired his best friend. His, his BFF. He's not going to want to let him go. Getting yeah. smoked. So the way that this actually played out, I did, I, how about this? You remember it, right? Like, oh god, you I remember explain. every bit of it. I, this is the most less miles way to win a football game. It's why I love him so much. It's why I love him because it, it, it's flawed. It's flawed. I, I, I don't like big juggernauts all the time because I like things with flaws. Okay, I just identify with them. I yeah. am a flawed person. Less is a flawed person, and and this is just incredible. They're lining up for the field goal. It's like, I don't know, 20 something seconds left on the clock. Not a lot of time. Lining up, they make the field goal. They win the football game. Field goal gets blocked. Texas Tech gets the ball, recovers it, and now they're trying to return it, which, why they're trying to return it? They already have the lead. They have the game won. But no, no, no. The game, the, game, the, game, the game is tied. It's 34 34. Oh, that's right. Okay. For some yeah. reason, I thought they were up by one. They won but, but even right. still, the odds of being able to return it when, when the ball goes over the line of scrimmage and you still have to run through everybody, those odds are not great, right? That's right. We'll, we'll so, just say anyway, that. they're trying to return the, the, the fumble, the, the, the block punt, sorry. And the guy fumbles the ball <laughs> and Kansas recovers it. And my heart just stopped. I'm like, stop the clock, stop the clock, stop the clock. Because the clock was ticking down and it stopped at two. 
Two seconds left. I was like, this kid that just got this punk block, uh, this, this kick block, is about to get another shot at redemption. This is an incredible story. This is what you want. I mean, you can't write this. If you were to bring a script to Hollywood, be like, hey, I got this feel-good movie, and this is how I want the game to end, they'd be like, get out of here. That's ridiculous. Like, that's just too much, and it's not realistic, and we just can't we can't sell this bull crap. But yeah. it really happened. And then the kid drills the kick, makes the win. After last week coming so close to beating Oklahoma, so close to beating Oklahoma, I thought they were going to let down this week because you just – you put so much into that. And I know moral victories don't matter at all. I love this man. I will, I will follow him to the ends of the earth. He is always – going to be my head coach. I just never going to change. <laughs> I absolutely love listening to you talk about Les Miles. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I wish I wish there was a way. Now, I might get uh, uh, like a restraining order, but if there was some way, Smacker Miles, one of his kids, somebody just let him know how much I love that man. Well, we could probably get Smacker on the show. I don't know. She's, she's pretty big. She used to work for Longhorn Network. Now I think she works for the Cowboys. Um, it, it, we... We have big people on here all the time. What are you talking? <laughs> what are you talking about? We I don't even care about being on the show. I just want to. I just want to shake your daddy's hand and the, just tell him thank you. Thank you for you always go. giving me your very best. <laughs> That's all. I love it. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Let's talk about Pac-12 after dark. Oregon thirty-six, Washington State thirty-four. Uh, I don't even know the best way to describe this football game. I. Planned on going to bed early, and I got sucked in, and I stayed up until one thirty something last night, Central Time. Uh, this was a really good game to stay up for, though. It really was. It really was. It's hard for me to go to bed on leech. Uh, yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. It was uh, – you look at the team stats. Now, I, I saw this coming a mile away. It was one of my bets last week. It was one of the few that actually won. Oh, no. Man, it got, got murdered gambling yesterday. Just – Good Lord, it's been like this I all season. Uh, yeah, you, you hadn't blinked it in a long time. Uh, no, you blinked it two weeks ago, man. Oh, well, no, it, I guess if you're talking personal, too. Yeah. On the show, you blinked it two weeks ago. You went 0 4 two weeks ago and then bounced back a little. Yeah, and then went 0 6 yesterday. Yeah, you're, you're getting to my level. <laughs> welcome I was, welcome I was, to the I was bottom. Living at about 500. Uh, yeah, and, and now you're not. I'm telling you, man, this season is strange. Like, there's some weird stuff going on with these numbers. Um, but it, So, back to Oregon-Washington State. Look, you look at the third down conversions. Oregon, 11 out of 17 for the game. Washington State was only one of nine on third down in this game. And they put up 35 points. And, and almost won the damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just insane. The, the total yardage, Oregon had 528. Washington State, 446. 406 of that was passing. Totally expected, right? Uh, rushing yards, 40 for Washington State, 306 for Oregon. Like, just ridiculous. And Mario Cristobal, I'm telling you, it, it, he did it last year multiple times. This end-game crap where he's on, like, the, the opponent's 35-yard line, 34-yard line, whatever, and he punts the ball on fourth and six with a, you know, three-point lead or whatever it was, or a, whatever the, the thing was. No, six-point lead. Either way, I understand trusting your defense. But at some point, you have to be aggressive. You have a, a top five, top ten, whatever, uh, NFL draft pick quarterback sitting back there. You've got playmakers all over the field. You have put up, you know, 450 yards of offense at this point. And for whatever reason... You don't go for the jugular and make sure you can put this game away when your defense has not been able to stop Washington State. He does this multiple times a year. His in-game clock management, his decision-making, and yet they continue to win in spite of it. It it kind of, like, I love Cristobal. I love his, his toughness. I love what he instills in a football team. But, man, like, doing this over and over again, it's going to get him caught this was absolutely an emotional letdown spot after last week's big win, you know, come from behind win in Seattle. And then they've got USC coming up this coming week. So this was a, a letdown spot. You're coming home. You're feeling a little comfortable. You, you're favored by two touchdowns. 
that's that's to be expected. But man, you you got to be better making decisions like that in the and I'm not saying that I would be much better. I'm not a college football coach, but you're getting paid millions and millions of dollars to do this. Right. You better find somebody on that sideline that can help you do this. Yeah. Or it's going we to get you called. tens of thousands, okay? Exactly. There's a, there's a there's a little bit of difference. Um no, I, I I completely agree with you. And if Washington State had any semblance of a defense, they they lose that game and I think they lose it bad. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah. You have to take shots. You have to. Look at the way college football is going. I mean, it, it's I mean, there's times where, where big teams, I mean, LSU did it a couple of times, where where they they will forego not just punting, they'll forego taking points, taking the, a gimme field goal with the with the opportunity to get seven or six because because they understand the difference of those three points. They matter. They just do. Yeah. Now you're you're right. You're hundred percent right. Uh, let's move on. Let's let's stay in the Pac-12. Let's let's keep on this. Utah thirty-five, Cal zero. Now, normally this would not be something that we would talk about, but uh, let me let me pull up these stats here because this was ridiculous. Uh, Cal only had eighty-three yards of total offense in this entire football game, and and Utah had four seventy-three. Cal only had, let's see, they had 22 passes. They had 23 rushes. The 23 rushes went for 21 rushing yards. The 22 passes, only nine of them were completed. It was 2.7 yards per pass. They only had 20 plays that they gained positive yardage on. Utah's defense, since the USC game, has been top five level. And they are getting zero love nationally because they're not doing it flashy, right? But this, to me, is the best, uh, the the best, the best team in the Pac-12. They are light years ahead. And as long as Hunley and Moss and they, their whole allotment of players are healthy, this is the team to beat in the Pac-12. Like I, I don't, I don't know that anybody would convince me otherwise. Oregon is good. I will take Kyle Whittingham over Mario Cristobal in in-game situations any day of the week. Am, am I crazy for thinking that? No, but I also think that Oregon having to play much bigger teams than, than Utah in conference especially. I mean, having to, having to beat Washington Washington State is a far, far cry from having to beat, you know, <clears throat> the uh, South. Utah just beat Washington State, uh, let's see, four weeks ago, 38-13. to 13. Correct. So, no, it's fine. It, it's, it's fine, yes, but I'm it's, just saying. It's, like, it's and, and and look, Utah gets to play at Washington in no next week, next week. Oh wow! Oh, I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah, so we'll we'll get to see what's going and on there. Almost everybody in conference. Uh, let's see. Utah has played. Do they play a ninth conference game? Yeah, yeah, they've got a ninth conference game. Yeah, the is the SEC the only conference that doesn't play nine conference games? Uh, the SEC and the ACC. Okay, holy crap! I for some reason I thought the Big Ten and the Pac Ten, uh, the Big Ten and the Big Twelve were the only two that did. I, no, no, no. Pac Twelve does nine. Pac-12 does two. Yep, Pac Twelve does I nine. Think we need to add a ninth conference game. Oh yeah, I think everybody should play nine conference games. I, I, God, it, it, it's always bothered me that the SEC doesn't. Uh, uh, hey, I agree. Uh, I, I tell you, you know, the Kentuckys and Tennessees and Vanderbilts and whatever the world uh, would like to fill up their non-conference slate with with more, um, you know, easy wins and whatnot. But, you know. Well, I that's, get it. But, I mean, at the same time, it's more shots for the big boys to get knocked out, too. Oh, yeah. I agree. Because Kentucky is a hell of a lot better than Rice. It it will it will happen eventually. It'll happen eventually. But uh, going, going back to uh, Utah. Sorry. Off the schedule. I, I didn't think they would play both of them because I was like, they've already played Cal and Washington State from the north, so they're not going to play Washington. Yeah, I guess they do. Yeah, they're playing Washington at Seattle this week. So, and, and the opening line on that, like the early look-ahead line, was Washington minus five in this spot? And, man, that's just begging you to take Utah. Like, it, it terrifies me. So, we'll, we'll see. But like I've told you before, Utah away from Salt Lake City – uh, not the same team. Not the same. Un- unless they are playing, um, let's see, unless they're playing at Oregon State, who they beat 52-7. to 
right? <laughs> I mean, there's a difference in class there, though. Oh, yeah. There's absolutely a difference in class. So, yeah, I uh, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm curious about it, but Utah it just dominating. Dominating on defense. And I, I, I think that they are the class of the Pac-12, and I'll wait around and see if I am proven wrong on that. Let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into the ACC Coastal Division. And the reason that I bring this up is because one of these teams is going to have to play Clemson at the end of the year. And Clemson's oh, schedule... Clemson. Yeah, Clemson's schedule is already blah, which is why nobody's talking about it. Like, they are dominating teams at this point, right? Ever, ever since the North Carolina game, they have flipped the switch, and they have looked... I mean, they beat... Uh, Boston College, fifty nine to seven yesterday, and it was actually worse than that. Like it, the the score doesn't indicate exactly how much they dominated that game. But if you look at the ACC Coastal, you've got Virginia at three and two now. You've got North Carolina at three and two. You've got Virginia Tech at two and two. You've got Pitt at two and two. Duke at two and three. Miami two and three, and Georgia Tech at one and three. Not a single team is out of it, and. This next week we will be in November. So <laughs> like I'm I'm curious what the tiebreakers are going to be, what all of this is going to end up with. Let's uh let's roll through some of these ACC games that were a little a little surprising or at least entertaining. Louisville 28, Virginia 21. Uh this should not have surprised me because Virginia has not been very good away from home this year. But the fact that Scott Satterfield like we were just wrong on Louisville yeah. And it, it some like it some of these some of these teams we were right on. We we did previews for all 130 FBS teams. We were dead on with some of them. Yes. Some of them we were dead wrong. It was the teams that were just god awful that made a coaching change, and I worked under the assumption that they it's were bad for so long they don't have talent. And these great coaches, I think I believe in the coaches that took over. But at some point in time, you've got to recruit kids, so you got to give them at least a year or two to get a recruiting class in. And we were wrong about evaluating the talent that was there. Yeah. Virginia oh. Virginia was a top 15 rushing defense. And then they went to Louisville, and Louisville put 227 yards rushing on 45 carries on them. Like, that is just... Yeah, we'll, we'll average 10 yards a touch. Yeah, might as well, right? I mean, it's 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 crazy. If you just Sounds like a good weekend. Uh, Malik Cunningham was 6 out of 10 for 126 yards and one touchdown. Uh, Cunningham had been pretty good at quarterback for Louisville here. Uh, he's been, he's been uh, really good, yeah. He also had 11 carries and 97 yards. That helps out a lot. Hawkins, for them, had 28 carries, 136 yards, two touchdowns. And Perkins, you know, Bryce Perkins again for Virginia. Another interception in this game. I, I get so frustrated at the at the inefficiencies, right? The turnovers, the mistakes. I mean, Virginia had more penalty yards. They had two pen, or two uh, turnovers to zero. Like, they, they find ways to beat themselves, and that's what drives me nuts. And I know it's got to drive Bronco Mendenhall nuts as well. Uh, but Virginia, I mean, it's still sitting at five and three, but this is a better team than that. And I just, oh, it's so frustrating to look at. So, along with that... Miami went to Pittsburgh and won 16 to 12. Now, I bring this up because if you look at Pitt's schedule, they have played all of their games but one have been uh, sorry, but two have been one possession games. They lost to Virginia 30 to 14, they beat Ohio 20 to 10, and then ever since then, every single game has been a one possession game where they win by a touchdown, lose by a field goal, whatever. It is mind blowing to me that Miami is so just all over the map, right? Like they they don't look good any week, and yet they find ways to win football games. They're four and four. Like as much crap as everybody has talked about them, they're still four and four. Like they're not awful. Yeah, but we expect to, the reason they talk crap is because we expect them to be the elite of the ACC this year. Yeah, we well, we thought that they could go ten and two after after they lost to Florida. That's right. And now they're definitely not doing that. But obviously, there's not another team in the ACC that's going to win ten ball games. Well, no. So, yeah, it's it's a little it's a little strange. 
Uh, Pitt had three turnovers. Uh, Miami only wouldn't uh, only one turnover. Like that just that blew my mind. Nikosi Perry, ten out of twenty four, one hundred four yards. They put Williams back in. He was four out of eight for fifty yards. Uh, they they weren't able to run the ball well. You know, it, it, neither team like this was just a gross fo- uh, football game. This is just yeah. disgusting. So, and then finally, Duke and North Carolina. Look, what is it? Uh, Tobacco Road? Is that yeah. it? Yeah, this was ridiculous. Deion Jackson tried a trick pass play at the goal line with 14 seconds left in this game. And if you did not watch it, it's on my Twitter. Like, go follow at GaryWCE. It's on there. They handed the ball off, ran the running back up to the line of scrimmage, and tried to get him to do a jump pass over the line of scrimmage, which was intercepted by a former North Carolina quarterback, Chaz Surratt who read the play perfectly. He threw the ball into three North Carolina defenders. And I, I looked at David Cookliffe on the sideline, and he just, it like, I, I don't think that that was how they drew that up, like, according to his reaction. Because it was ugly and mind-blowing, and I have never seen a team lose a ball game that way. That if, if They would have had a better shot if they had just run it in the middle of the line. That's right. It was un freaking believable. So, yeah, the ACC is a mess. Uh, it, nobody's going to help Clemson out with this. If Clemson loses a game, that's that's right now. I don't see it happening. But if they do, uh, they they don't have room for error. They don't have an Oklahoma situation here where they could you know you get big wins coming back or something like that. No, it's uh you you don't have anybody showing up in the championship game that's going to turn heads. Like, period. It, it's it's mind-blowing to me. Uh, to be fair, let's give a little bit of love to Willie Taggart and his bunch. 35-17 to 17 win over Syracuse. We were dead wrong on the Orange men. Or the Orange, I guess now is what they're called. Um, that was that was ugly. Like, Syracuse can't score. They can't stop nobody. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, they're banged up. I mean, that offense is, is in shambles. Yeah, it's, it's definitely that. Um, and then, you ready to close out the show? Yeah. Let's talk about ABC primetime in Memphis. And it took some freaking miracle work to get them here. Like, this this was divine intervention have, at its I time. have no idea how Memphis pulled that game off. Uh, well, let, let's, hey, before we do that, let's move to Thursday. SMU 34, Houston 31. Houston outgained SMU 6.8 yards per play to 5.35. Like, that is a massive difference. And Houston was able to move the ball at will on them. The difference, though, Houston had three turnovers. SMU only had one. That'll that'll help win you some ball games, right? You win the turnover battle, you're probably going to win the ball game. Memphis, let's move into this one from last night. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, Memphis 42, Tulsa 41. Tulsa missed a 29-yard field goal at the buzzer, and he shanked it, like, wide left. He was on the, the far right hash mark. And shanked it left. And I I had already sat with my wife because she was obviously excited. Like, it, when, when Memphis scores the touchdown to go up by one point with four minutes left in the game, I said they left way Which too much time. Which is insane anyway because yeah. they were down. Oh, yeah. I mean, they had gone down. Like, they were up, what, 35 to 24 in the fourth okay. quarter. And, or it may have been, like, late third, whatever. But Tulsa comes back. Memphis turning the football over not being efficient with the ball, not not being able to... Their success rate was pretty terrible in some spots. They got playmakers, but man, this defense looked like they just wanted to... Tulsa scored three touchdowns in a row, or three two touchdowns and a field goal in a row. Yeah. <clears throat> and the field goal, they should have scored a touchdown. That's like, right. Because they, they got it all the way down to, you know, the, the what, 11-yard line? Or yeah. inside the 10, whatever. Uh, that was just... I don't have words for it, but I but I had already told my wife like if they lose this game, I'm not going next week. Like I'm, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm not going out to sit in 35 degree weather to watch this team get whipped up on by SMU, and yet I had to remind myself like SMU almost had this same thing happen to them against Tulsa. They almost had the same thing happen to them against Houston. This happens to football teams. Yes. Like, 
Hey, Clemson almost got beat by North Carolina. These things happen, and you can't really explain them. Nope. Uh, I, I will say this. I don't believe that that Memphis defense is as good as, as we thought they were at the beginning of the year. Like, is that is that fair to say? No, it's probably fair to say, but also you're on the road, and, you know, I don't know. Tulsa's not a terrible team. Yeah. No, you're, you're right. You're right. Uh, Tulsa's not terrible. They're so, probably so – Now we're waiting Thank you. We're waiting on one more big shoe to drop, right? They are – yeah, we're waiting on, on college game day, which we, yeah. this entire time – we're recording, by the way. It is now 10.52 a.m. on Sunday morning on, what is it, October the 27th. And I have been refreshing the college game day Twitter account. I, to, I, I have to literally, I keep looking down and just checking. And I, just I'm checking, checking. Felika's. Like, I, I, I texted yeah, Felika. Yeah, Fowler, Irby, anybody. Like, I, I texted Felika last night. I was Davis. like, I said, what's the word? I got no response. They they are keeping this uh, tight-lipped. I will say this. Uh, Kirk Herbstreet, that, I mean, he just, it, it, it terrifies me. Because he retweeted the Oregon uh, it's up, it's good thing from from last night where they kicked the game-winning field goal, yeah. which terrifies me thinking that they're going to go to the Coliseum. Now, why oh, you would go to the Coliseum? You go to the Coliseum all the time. USC sucks. They should have lost so bad. Yeah. USC was beat by Colorado. Don't go, don't, go, don't go there. No, but to be fair, 10 minutes ago, he just did share out teams having good years that are off the national radar – first one he put was at Memphis football seven and one so to be fair like that's it, it, that does uh, maybe signal good things but I just I there's been no news and typically they've got this stuff figured out right and yeah. so we're still waiting to see all right are they going to go to the cocktail party are they going to go to Memphis are they going to go to Oregon USC it would make more sense from a business perspective to go to Memphis because that is the game that their company is actually carrying. Oh, yeah, they don't have to pay for a private flight. Let's let's save some cheese there. ESPN's on a budget crunch. Yeah, let's uh, just make this easy. That's right. And and everybody come on down to Memphis and we'll all go have some I'll ribs. We'll dinner for Felipe one night. He don't have to expense that. It'll be good. That's, uh, forget that. Hey, just bring the whole crew. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll find a way. We got credit. Come on now. Come on now. I'll offer offer to pick up the check. Gary's inviting everybody. Come on now. Damn. That's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. I'm going to Chicago again. (laughs) Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, yeah, so we're we're still waiting on that. And, obviously, we will talk about it on Tuesday because, at that point, we will know what is happening. Uh, Last week, they did not release it until Sunday afternoon. Um, Yeah, so it's getting later in the week. Yeah, it, I'll be shocked if they go to the cocktail party. I just think it's hard to cover a team three times in a year. Uh, Sorry, four, four, four times. times. They've yep. already covered Florida twice. Oh no, they've already you, you keep three running. times. They've already, they've already covered three. Times. That'd be the fourth time having to cover Florida. I think that would be hard. Not just hard to sell, but hard to come up with content for. It's not a. It's not a. We dislike this program or not. It, it's a. It's a. How many specials can you run on a team over and over again? So, you know. That it, it's it's difficult to do that. I'm sure that they can find ways to make it work. There's you know multiple oh, scholarship yeah. athletes. There's just but, so many other teams you'd like to showcase at some point in time. Yeah, and you're gonna get so few opportunities to go to small teams. I, I'm gonna tell you this. I love when game days at one of my games. Don't care for them on the road at home neutral site doesn't matter. PJ Flett pounding the chest saying game day come to come to come to Minnesota. I actually wouldn't be upset if they went to Minnesota. I don't know if they've either. ever been. I don't know if they've ever been. And that Minnesota Penn State game is going to be a good showcase game. I, and I think, I, think I think if any team has deserved the right to say, let us have one big national stage and talk about it, because there's a really good chance that, that it all goes to an end Saturday, then then I wouldn't be devastated if if they pick if they pick Minnesota at all. Well, that that would be. Well, let's see. Does Minnesota Minnesota's got an off week, don't they? This no, week? Minnesota and Penn State both have buys. Yeah, they both have buys this week, so so they're both going to be. Yeah, it'd just be like it would us. be Alabama, LSU, or Minnesota, Penn State. That's it. And Those are the only two choices next week, and 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 I and I kind of I kind of would like to see Minnesota get their, you know, 
their time in the sun. Yeah. PJ Fleck has turned that program around. I don't know how real they are. I know I'm doing a, a Minnesota preview right now, but like, let them get their 10 minutes of fame real quick because life's about to hit them hard. And yeah. if they win, then unbelievable. Well, I'll tell you this. Regardless of anything else, the fact that they have won eight ball games already, that's like, insane. That is that's a that's a good that's coaching right. job. That is it, getting the most out of your players, and they are at a point now where they absolutely believe that they can win every game on their schedule. That's like, you're exactly right, and that's no, confidence exactly. is a big part of of every football team. I be, I believe that. I believe in PJ Flag, and I like the idea of college game day showcasing other teams all the time. You don't have to come to Baton Rouge every year. Like, yeah. I love them, too. God, oh, man, the atmosphere is just turned up that much higher when they do. But it's still one of those things where I get it. This is a national game with 130 teams in the power um, conferences. And, and not just power conferences, but the, in the FBS. In FBS, all yeah. Of that. Yeah. To say we have to showcase the top 10 every year – and there's only, I don't know, 13 weeks of the season that you really do this with bye weeks. That means you only get to go to three random places sometimes. That, yeah. Let's, let's spread it out a little bit. Spread it out. Go, go to Memphis this week after going to North Dakota State or uh, South Dakota State last week. Yeah. And then go to Minnesota next week. That's It'll right. Be all be I'm totally fine with that. Like, you'll still be able to cover Alabama LSU from Minnesota. Well, um, no doubt. And it doesn't, and anybody who thinks where they go affects ratings. Don't they don't understand how TV works? Nope, that's not how. Nobody's it gonna wake up and be like, "Oh, they're not at LSU, Alabama." I guess I'm not gonna turn on the number one college football pregame show in the world. <laughs> no, you're right. You're that right. Person is a moron if they say that, and they're not missing out on anything because no advertisers selling that guy anything. No, you're right. You're right. All yeah. right, is there anything else you uh, you think we need to hit? No, I mean it's up to you. We're gonna keep rolling. Uh, roll. Let's we'll see. Get out of here. We'll uh, go. we'll do a different. We'll do a, a different video only for uh, for our top ten and everything else. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, go check out the YouTube channel. We'll have our top ten and we'll have our college football playoff picks. Go and check that out over on the YouTube page, YouTube.com/slash Winning Cures Everything. You can find all that over at Winning Cures Everything.com. The show always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Chris, we will talk about this stuff later. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.